if you're anything like me, you have a ton of scrap wood lying around just waiting to use it for something cool. So today I'll make five quick and simple projects you can make from scrap wood, all of which would make excellent holiday gifts because nothing says I love you like giving the gift of scrap. First up, I'll show you how to make these super simple trivets. So I've made these in the past before as gifts and they're always a huge hit. I made three different ones here and I'm going to show three different ways how to make them. First, I'll need some scrap wood and I'm just gonna look for anything that'll get me a trivet that's around seven or eight inches square. All right, so all these scraps are different sizes. So I'm going to have to approach each one of these differently, but the concept is going to be the same. There's going to be a piece of wood that's going to sit in dados creating a grid pattern. For the first one, I'll make the dados using this dado jig that I posted about a few weeks ago. And the first thing that I need to do is just set the width for the material that I want to fit into the dado. Now I can just place the jig on top of my piece. I'll use a piece in the back here to help support it. And I made some marks on this piece, like about two inches apart. So I'll just place the jig that the right hand side of the opening is on that mark. Clamp everything down and take a few passes to get to my desired depth. And I'll just keep moving it to the next mark that I have. Now I'll just trim this to size. And if I were making more of them this way, I would have just continued to route those dados on this piece over here. But instead I'm gonna show you how to do it at the router table. And the only difference here is that the material that you're going to use to put into the dados needs to be an exact thickness of one of your router bits. So I milled this up to be the correct thickness of this bit. I just did like a test cut in a piece of plywood and just kept milling it down until it fit into that little groove. I made some marks that are about two inches apart on the side here, and I'll use that as a guide for where to line up the router bit. I'll just take multiple passes until I get to the depth that I want. Now, before going into the third way to make this trivet, I'm just going to rip these into about five pieces and I'll just uh, guess how wide each one needs to be. And the reason why I'm doing this before showing you the third one is because the third one I'm not going to make out of a single block. I'm going to make it out of four separate pieces. I cut the first block a little bit oversized because there was the tear out from the router. And that way I could just now flip the piece over and clean up that other edge. And then just continue to cut up the block into more pieces. So I think that it's easier and more accurate to do it from a whole piece like this. But let's say you don't have a whole piece like that and you only have little strips like this. So you could totally do it this way. I switched out to a flat top grind blade here to make a clean dado. And I'll just uh, take a series of passes using stop locks to make all the dados here. I have a one inch spacer here and I'll just move everything to where I'll cut a wide, one inch wide dado. And now for this one, I thought that it would be cool if the pieces that went inside of there was ripped from this panel that was a scrap from a previous project. So I'll just rip this up into one inch wide strips to fit into those dados. Oh, and I could use that little scrap piece. And because I'm making three of these, I decided to show off three different edge treatments on them. So on uh, this one, I did chamfers on all the edges. On uh, this one, I did roundovers on everything. I quite like the look of that. 
And on this one, I didn't do anything. I just broke the edges and lightly sanded everything so that uh, it's nice to touch. So now all I have to do is glue these together and they're done. I could use a spacer to put in between all of the pieces, but instead I'm just going to eyeball it because it really just does not need to be perfect at all. The first two that I made had really tight joints, so I didn't clamp them. The last one that I made on the table saw was a bit looser, so all I had to do was just use something heavy to hold it in place. Then once the glue dried, I could add the finish to all them, and they're ready to be used. I love how each one of these is just so unique based on the different types of wood species, the different thicknesses of wood, and also the different edge profiling. I absolutely love the round over on this one. I think it looks so cool. All right, moving on to the next project. It's this bagel stand. And I know what you're thinking, that just looks like dowels glued into a block of wood. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> so that's how I originally wanted to build it. And then I was like, where am I going to store something like this? I don't have room in my cabinets for that. So I decided to make the dowels removable and they can be stored in the base. The coolest part, the dowels are then held in place with magnets so they don't fall out. And you can easily take them out whenever you need to. First, I'll need some scrap. All right, so I'll use this to make the dowels and I'll use this to make the base. So I want the dowels to sit inside the base, but I don't have any drill bits that are long enough to drill holes out down this whole board. So I'm gonna to have to resaw this in half, route out some channels, and then glue this back together. But if you don't have access to a bandsaw to be able to resaw boards like this, you can just start off with some um, two thinner pieces and then do what I'm about to do and then glue it back together. I sent these boards through the planer to clean them up, but before doing anything to them, I think I wanna make the dowels so that I know like what size channels I need to make. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with 3 8 dowels. So I'll rip this into 3 8 inch strips. And then I'll use a round over bit to turn that square stock into dowels. Now using a cove bit, I could route channels on the inside of both of these pieces. And I'll just keep raising the bit until I get to the height that I need. Now I don't wanna go all the way through to the end of the board. So one of them is going to have a stock cut using a line that I marked on the fence here. And the other one, I'm going to plunge it and then run it all the way through. And that way, when I meet these two together, they're going to line up better than if I would do it any other way. Then I just made a flat bottom into the bottom of the grooves so that I can glue a magnet into the bottom and it will hold the dowels into place. Spray the magnet with some activator spray. Now there's the magnets in the bottom of this one. I'll just spread a ton of glue around everywhere except for into these grooves. I'm just gonna add some more CA glue here just in case. Clamp this up and set it off to dry. After the glue dried, I flushed up the edges at the table saw, trimmed it to find a length at the miter saw, and then added a chamfer around all the edges just to make it look cool, not a necessary step at all. Then I drilled holes in the ends of the dowels I made earlier, trying to stay as centered and straight as possible. And those holes are going to be for the threaded rod that I cut to size. And then I just used some epoxy to permanently attach them into the holes that I drilled into the ends of the dowels. While that epoxy set up, I drilled holes in the base about six inches apart using a drilling guide block to keep the drill straight. Then I installed the threaded inserts into those holes and threaded inserts are really easy to put in if you use a washer and a bolt to help drive them in. I also put on a little bit of CA glue so that the threaded inserts will stay in place. Awesome. I put some finish on it, set it to dry overnight, and it's ready to use. This stand can hold over a dozen bagels and even donuts if you're so inclined. 
So this one's actually not going to be a gift because I've been wanting to build this for myself for a while now and I cannot wait to use it when we have people over for brunch. I really hope that that's soon. Moving on to the next one. This one is a little bit more involved, but I think it's super cool to make these boxes out of small pieces of scrap. First, I collected all the small skinny scraps that were about the same thickness. Then I ripped them into strips so they were all the same width. And then I whipped out my crosscut sled to square up all the ends. I used wax paper on a flat piece of MDF along with a straight edge that's covered in packing tape to do the glue up. And I just kept gluing the pieces brick by brick, trying to keep the pattern as random as possible. The trick here is just to go super fast. I think this whole glue up took me just over 15 minutes to get it into clamps. And it would be best to clamp from the underside as well for even clamping pressure. But I was concerned the small pieces would fall down. This worked. Because once dry, I could just send it through the planer and clean it all up. Then I took it over to the crosscut sled, cut off one edge to make it square, and then cut it into the piece that I'm going to use as the top. And now I'm going to base all the measurements for the sides off of this top piece. Now I actually have a whole separate video on how to make these scrap wood boxes where I go into a ton of detail on making multiple versions of them with a bunch of different patterns. So I'll just quickly gloss over the steps here. First, I make a rabbit on all sides of the top at the router table. Then before cutting the box up, I make the grooves that will hold the bottom piece of plywood and the rabbited top. Then I use the bevel feature on my crosscut sled to cut up all of the box parts. I use the box top as a reference for how long to cut the first two pieces. And then I use a stop lock to cut the next two pieces. Those opposite sides should be the same length. As for the glue up, nothing fancy here. Just put some glue in all the miners and grooves, put the top and bottom into place and roll it on up using some painter's tape as clamps. All right, so those miters look really good. And normally to make boxes like this, I would use some sort of reinforcement in the corners, like some splines or maybe some miter keys. Not going to do that here just for the sake of time, but uh, I have some videos that show how to do that. And um, I guess I also just want to test to see how strong this box is going to be without adding those reinforcements. So uh, now I just got to shape it up, cut off the top, add some little details, and it's basically done. Now when cutting off the top, I think it's safer to not cut all the way through. So I'll use the bottom of the box as a reference for how high to raise the blade. I'll go just under um, this thickness of the material that I used as the sides. And I'll just set the fence so that I cut on a seam. Now there are a ton of ways that you can attach the lid onto the box. You can use hinges and make it open up like that. You could put some lining inside over here and the top could pressure fit into the bottom. I'm going to actually do the same sort of thing, but the opposite. I'm going to put some um, scrap pieces into the top over here. I'll just glue these into place and now the top is going to be pressure fit into the bottom of the box. It was really awesome to see the grain pop on this one. And it's done. I just really love using those small pieces of scrap that are basically garbage and making something from nothing. So normally I would probably put some sort of handle on the lid there, but I kind of think that it looks cool that it's just like 
a cube and it's kind of like functional artwork. Definitely going to keep an eye on those miters to see if uh, making it without reinforcements is fine or not. All right, so moving on to the next one. This is actually super easy to make. This is a cheese slicing board. And what makes it so easy is that all you need is this kit from Woodcraft. First thing, you guessed it, more scrap wood. So I put these all in just a random order, but I have these really thin strips here of alternating colors. And I think it might be cool if I um, cut them at an angle, then re-glue them to make some sort of chevron pattern. So what I'll do is I'll offset all of these um, to be 45 degrees so that there's just the least amount of waste. While I chose to glue up scraps to make this project, you absolutely do not need to at all. You can just take a solid piece of wood that you have and just make the cheese slicer out of that. I cleaned up the board at the planer, then set my miter gauge to 45 degrees just to make that first initial cut. Then I took a stop block with double-sided tape and put it around one inch away from the blade. And that's going to act as a stop block to make repetitive one inch wide strips. And then I had to just flip each strip over to make the chevron pattern. And then I glued it on up again. Since this is end grain, I'm really gonna flood it with a ton of glue. Oh, I didn't mean to do this last one. Now I just need to follow the directions that came in the kit. Okay, so it seems like the important dimensions are how wide the board is going to be. And I have the large kit, so it's going to need to be five and three quarters wide. So the length of it really doesn't matter. Um, they say nine and a half seems okay. Let's see what I'm gonna end up getting from this if I cut off this is gonna be around like 10 and a half. So I think I'll just cut it to that since it doesn't matter the length of it. Now I have to cut it to width. Now this dimension is important. It says it needs to be five and three quarters wide. More scrap for another project. Now the next step is to drill a quarter inch hole in the end of it, five inches from the edge. So in order to center that onto a board, I'll use this self-centering doweling jig, but you don't need to use something like this. You can drill it by eye, by hand. This is just going to make it easier for me to drill into the center of the end of this board. Now with this jig, I couldn't go all the way to the depth that I need to, but at least it just started the hole out for me, which is cool. I set the blade height to three eighths and I moved the fence so that it will cut a line three inches from the end where I drilled the hole. then added a chamfer on all the edges, then put on a food safe finish. I tried to install the arm, but ran into a slight problem. Okay, so here's the problem. So the hole that I drilled for the arm, uh, it's a quarter inch and that's just as wide as this arm. So I can't fit this loop into there in order to get the arm in. I guess I missed this part <laughs> in the directions. It actually said, to use a small chisel or an awl to go into there to make room for the wire. So I'm just gonna use a marking knife to do that really quick. All right, I got it working. It definitely pays to read all of the instructions. This thing is so satisfying to use.
I've also wanted one of these for a while, so I'm not gonna be giving this one away either. So I absolutely just love how this pattern turned out, especially the thin strips in there. I just think it looks so cool. Um, and I guess the one thing that I was concerned about with this was how hard or how easy it would be to clean the, um, the groove over here. And it really wasn't so difficult at all. I just took like a knife and just scraped away the cheese that was inside and totally fine. So I'm definitely going to stock up on these so that I have them on hand for future gifts. I will put a link down below and you guys can make your own cheese boards. All right, moving on to the next one, this spice rack. So I saw this in a store and I thought it looked really cool. Then I looked at the price, $90. We can do better than that. Take some scrap, cut it to the size you want, then just drill as many holes as you like. Add some edge detailing if you prefer, put some finish on it, order some test tubes from Amazon, and it's done. $90, that's crazy. <laughs> so I hope this gave you some inspiration for quick and simple projects that you can make this holiday season. I'm going to link down below to everything that I use. I'll also link to my website where I have some more information on how to make these, like more dimensions and things like that. I'll link to the box videos, the scrap wood box videos, and I'll also link to the, um, the cheese slicer kit so you guys can make your own. So thanks to Woodcraft for sponsoring this video. Happy holidays. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. All right, your headphones are on? Yeah. Okay, press the button. Too much power. <laughs> what just happened? What just happened? Harder. Oh no, I think it, th maybe this is filled with, with dust maybe. Yeah, that's the problem. D if the dust collector is full, sometimes it trips the breaker. Let me just empty this out. Don't press any buttons. All right, oh, we, we emptied the dust collector. Let's see if that works. Let's try that again. All right, press it out, turn it on. Yep, that was the problem.